Hi everyone, good to have all of you here. Thanks for taking the time to be here. So like Anup said, today we're going to talk about email marketing automation. And yeah, so you can uh, follow me on Twitter. Uh, I'm quite active there. I seem to spend a lot of time on Twitter these days. So if you want to reach out to me, then yeah, that's my handle at the bottom. So reach out to me on Twitter. So the question is, uh, why email marketing? And, you know, when as a business owner or as a marketer, you're always wondering if I'm going to spend time and uh, money on a certain marketing tech uh, tactic, what is the return on my investment, whether it's time or, or money, right? And surprisingly, while, you know, you have the rise of social media, email marketing is still very, very effective and um, something that not a lot of people actually take advantage of and people that do, uh, don't fully exploit it. So there are you know, uh, plenty of data points to, uh, to tell you why email marketing is so important. Uh, so for example, for every $1 that was spent on email marketing in 2019, marketers saw a return of $42. This is far and above any other marketing platform that is available today, right? And while email gets a lot of slack for the spam and, and whatnot, it's still a very effective medium to do your marketing. And in fact, this number went up from 2018 to 2019. So, so email is still very, very relevant, right? And if you're wondering, you should spend any time and money in this, then this should be one uh, uh, factor to convince you that yes, email marketing is something you should seriously look at. So a few more quick reasons as to why email marketing is important. It is an integral part of your digital life and your customer's digital life. It is the fundamental currency on the internet, if you think about it. For every account that you create, they ask you for an email ID. There is nothing that you can do on the internet today that does not require you to have an email ID. So it's a very commonly traded currency if you, if you were to say uh, on, on the web. India, maybe you could argue that mobile numbers are more valuable and that's partly true. But even in India, if you are uh, a freelancer or a business owner targeting an audience, which is let's say in the organized sector, then there is a very high likelihood that they are using emails. So, so email is, is an integral part. You can't, cannot ignore it. It's still growing, right? There are 3.9 billion users of email today. And uh, I think Statistica has a, a data point that shows that in fact, it is likely to grow to 4.5 billion in, in, in a few years from now. So, so it is, uh, email is not dead to put it in put it one way. And when you ask somebody for your uh, for their email ID, you are asking them to part with that that email currency, which is a good test before you actually ask them to open up their wallets, right? Before you ask them to pay to use your service or pay to buy your product, getting them to give their email IDs as a first step might be a good test case to see if you know they are a potential customer or not. So so think of it that way. Emails, unlike a lot of other platforms, provide a direct communication channel with your customer. And you know, you can you can use this to provide that personalization that is not possible on any other platform. So think of this as you know, you sending an email to your friend or to somebody uh, directly, right? You while you do email marketing, you're writing email to one single person. And you know, as they say, it's easy to preach to the converted. So once you have somebody engaged with uh, what you're trying to say, then it's a lot easier to convince them to, to take a look at your service or your product. So you know, nobody likes uh, the annoying salesman who comes knocking at your door trying to sell you something, uh, as opposed to some, you know you already being interested in a in a product or a company 
and you like what they say and you like what they what, you know to hear what they say then the chances are that you're more likely to buy a product or a service that they're offering so so email marketing can be a soft sell before you actually pitch your service or a product so how does it really work you know of course there is the the word email marketing means that you're sending emails but how does this whole system work so we wrote about this in detail on our uh, in our guide and i'll share the link with you at the end of this uh, webinar but here's a infographic that we made and let me quickly walk you through the different elements so well of course we've written it from a wordpress point of view as i was saying that's our area of uh, expertise but this applies to you know any any website it could be a wix website it could be a squarespace website it could be any website that you on any platform that you build so think of it this way <clears throat> you uh, try and attract the audience uh, from different platform whether that's on social media whether that's seo whether that's through ad campaigns and ultimately you are then asking them to visit your website right so those are website visitors that come to your website from different channels so these are called marketing channels and on the website you have tools called opt-in forms <clears throat> and they take the shape of a pop-up or or a chat widget like uh, you know uh, element that comes up on the website and there's also something called the exit intent and uh, we'll see if uh, we can open up a few websites to uh, you know check how how these things uh, happen so on the website you have a whole bunch of tools that you can use that we've written about uh, in our guide and you know you can have these tools that are essentially in other words lead magnets so you are using these tools to get the attention of somebody who's come to the website and say hey we have uh this free offer or we have this free template we have uh some interesting information that we send out once a week or every day depending on you know your audience uh, or do you want to uh, be the first to know when we have discounts sign up for our newsletter so you use these hooks using these different tools on your website to collect the email ids right so a web visitor then becomes a subscriber so a subscriber is essentially an interested or an engaged website visitor whose name and email at the minimum you have captured and added to your email marketing software now what are these email marketing softwares there are a whole bunch of them and um, we will quickly you know look at them in the next slide but that's the next step once you they come to the website you collect their email ids you put them into your email marketing database so that's really your first uh, major thing that you need to uh, look at or or collecting email ids and here i just want to quickly point out uh, it might seem obvious but i think it's still worth mentioning is uh, and especially that given that this practice is still prevalent uh, in india is the habit of purchasing email databases if you have ever done it or if you plan to do it please don't it's uh, it's unethical it's illegal in a lot of countries uh, in india not so given our sort of loose privacy laws but please don't take that approach it does not work in fact you end up harming your business uh, you know in a significant way uh, as opposed to building an email list organically through your website so so let's assume that you are following you know all the best practices you've set up a website you have these uh, pop ups or slide ins you're offering them something interesting and so you're collecting the email ids and you're putting the email ids into a email marketing database and so once it's in the database you need a a software or a platform which can then let you create campaigns email campaigns right using the the email ids that you've captured uh in your database and so we'll get into some of the options like i said that are available uh, a lot of them are free and you know very easy to get started with there are also 
the next level, once you do this, you can set up automations. And Anup has something that he will show you uh, soon uh, that can you know, uh, let you save a lot of time. And these automations essentially help you send out emails to your audience on a periodic basis based on a schedule that you have defined and triggered based on certain actions that the user does either on the website or with respect to the emails that they have sent. So for example, uh, you can set up triggers that say if somebody has clicked a link in my pre previous email that I have sent them, send them the next five set of emails. If somebody has not opened the email in the last three days, then send another set of different set of emails. So you can create workflows and, and automate that based on you know, how you predict the user is going to behave. So, so this lets you, you know, automate a lot of this. You're not sitting and sending out emails manually to each and every person, nor are you sending the same email to everybody. And so this, you know, lets you personalize your emails to the audience and you know your audience is not likely to be uh, having the same interests and the same preferences there if you've done the, the the job of finding a niche and marketing to a right audience then of course they will largely share a similar uh, as seth gordon says a similar world view but they might still have individual preferences they might be in different locations and we look at how you can actually segment your audience um, in, in a email marketing software. But yeah, you can trigger emails based on the clicks. Some, when somebody subscribes to your email for the first time on your, through your website, you can set up a series of emails that automatically go out, right? So you, you, you sit and you write out, let's say 10 emails, you upload that, those emails into your email marketing software and you say, trigger these series of 10 emails when somebody signs up for the first time, right? So they automatically get those emails on the first day, maybe the third day, maybe the seventh day, you can decide that frequency, but you are essentially automating that entire email sequence. And what is this doing? You're through this you know, series of emails that you're sending, your ultimate goal is to convert that person in from a, subscriber into a lead who is potentially interested in one of your products or services. That's really your ultimate goal. So through the email marketing campaigns, you create content that is engaging and valuable, and then you move them one step further down the funnel at a point where they are, they are asking, tell me more about this service or tell me more about this product. <clears throat> uh, like Anup said, uh, you know, we've done email marketing for a number of years for our own business and always pleasantly surprised when, you know, somebody just hits reply to a automated email thinking that I've actually sent this out personally to them and then saying that, I mean, uh, you know, tell me more about this. I want to know more. Or just that the email that, I, that was sent to them uh, triggers a whole uh, set of thought process in their on, in their head, and there's a brand recall. It's like, oh, oh, there is Pixelmatic. They do, you know, WordPress sites. I am currently facing a problem. Now that I see this email, let me try and send a quick reply to Sandeep and ask him if they have the time to help me with this. So, brand recall is also a, a big, uh, you know. Uh, benefit of, of doing email marketing. In fact, we did this for one of our clients um, as an IOT solutions company. And in fact, one of their objectives was brand recall. So they were doing a lot of face-to-face uh, -face sales, you know, door-to-door. Uh, -door. And, uh, and these were, you know, they're selling to big corporates. And we designed a uh, series of emails for them and we sent it out to their uh, customer database. And, you know, in a period of three to four months, one of the customers got back to them uh, who they had worked with previously. And they suddenly realized that, hey, there is this company that can provide IoT solutions and we are investing time and money. So let's talk to them. 
and that client ended up being uh, converted and that was bosch bosch is a you know big client right so for any 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 uh, startup or any business that gets a client of that nature it's a big win so and this is done through email marketing and so that's again another uh, benefit of of doing this well so when you do automation of course there are uh, a whole bunch of things that you can do i've touched upon it briefly we might be possibly can come back to this slide again later. Uh, so there's a welcome sequence, onboarding sequence, re-engagement sequence. So we can talk about this uh, at, at a later point. So let's move on. So what tools can help you do all of this? There are lots of them. So I've just curated the most popular ones. A lot of them are free. Uh, for example, MailChimp is probably the most popular. You have SendInBlue, you have HubSpot, Aweber, Email Octopus, a lot of them offer free plans, which lets you send out 2000 emails in a month on an average. And that's plenty if you're getting started, right? If you're just building your email list, you know, you're not going to get to 2000 in a, in a month. So use any of these tools to get started. Anup, at this point, do you want to uh, share or you want to do that later? Uh, we can do that. Not a problem. Uh, are you sure you're, or, or are you taking them through any of the tools to, right now? Yeah, I was thinking of uh, taking them through MailChimp. Maybe I Please, can do uh, that and then... Yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. Then I will uh, show them the other versions. Okay. All right. So, let me log into MailChimp. So, we use the free version of MailChimp for years, for many years. So... Only recently did we uh, pay to, uh, to, to, use, uh, the, to use them. They also have uh, lots of different pricing options. So let me quickly walk you through uh, the different areas of uh, MailChimp. So, <clears throat> so there are these campaigns. So every email that you create is a campaign and what you do is you go here, you create campaign. And uh, a lot of these tools that, that I've shared started off as just email marketing tools, but today they have progressed to being full-fledged marketing platforms. So they don't do just email, they let you do a lot of other things, uh, creating ads, landing pages, surveys, social posts, sign up forms, postcards. They even send out physical postcards uh, to people. I have not used it, but I'm not sure if this is available in India. But yeah, they have they have a ton of uh, other marketing things that you can do on their platform. But since we're discussing email, let's look at that. Let's say webinar demo. Yeah. Okay. So it's very nicely laid out uh, step by step it you know the the ui and this is one reason why i like mailchimp the user interface and their uh, you know everything that they write this is called micro copy all of that is very very self explanatory uh, and so even for somebody who's just starting out it's fairly easy to do it so you go here to the two section you click on add res uh, recipients and you have your database you select your audience, I'll talk about this audience and segmenting in just a bit. And you can also personalize, this is what I was saying. So there are this concept called merge tags. So you put star, pipe, F name, star, or you can do star, last name, pipe, star. And that simply replaces this little code with the actual name from the database for every email ID that you have. So. So if it is, uh, you know, my name in the database, it will simply replace it with Sandeep Kelbari. So you can say, you know, two or hi, and it will come across as being uh, an email that you've written just for that person. So this personalization is great. Okay. So I'll skip it. You don't, you know, I don't use personalization all the time. Um, and this is not the only way to personalize. You can personalize in different, uh, different ways. So I'll tell you that about that as well. 
so once you you set up your email uh, marketing platform, uh, it'll send out emails from a specific email ID, and it's always good to add a name to that email ID. So don't just put your service or company name and leave it at that. So if somebody gets an email and it just says Pixelmatic, hello at pixelmatic.com versus my name, it sounds a lot more personal. It's, it feels like I am sending that, these emails out, right? So always include real names in addition to your uh, company name, okay? So then you have subject lines. So, I mean, just to uh, keep this short, Subject lines is probably an entire discussion in itself, but you know, subject lines might make a big difference to the number of people that actually end up opening your emails because that's the only thing that they read or that's the first thing that they read. And if it's not interesting enough, they will not click it. So it's part art, part science, how to write great subject lines, similar with headlines. So there are some tips here that uh, MailChimp themselves are you know, suggesting try, not to not use more than nine words, use, don't use more than one emoji, uh, avoid using more than 60 characters, and don't put too many punctuation marks, right? Don't scream free, free, put multiple exclamation marks, multiple emojis, might turn off a lot of people, right? So keep it simple, keep it short, and you know, and then you can also uh, experiment with different subject lines and see what works. Ultimately, it depends on you know, what your audience prefers. So you will have to experiment. Okay. And then this preview text is, uh, is basically the text that shows up uh, in, in a lot of places as a preview. So, so you can enter something here. Uh, And then you save. So it's it automatically, if you go back here, you see it's ticked off all the guidelines. And so this feedback tells you that you've done a reasonably good job. Okay, <clears throat> now is the question of designing emails. Now, before I get into this, and while you know uh, there's, there's lots to talk about, and we, want, we won't get into uh, the technical aspects of, of designing emails. The good aspect of using a marketing tool like MailChimp or any of the others is that they take care of a lot of the basics for you, uh, particularly the fact that the emails are compatible with all the different email clients and mobile devices. Uh, so today, a lot of people open their emails on phones. I'm sure you know if you think about how you uh, read emails, a lot of it is on your phones. So. If you design emails which are which have images that are really wide, then it's not going to show up on your mobile phone. Or it's, if it's too big, the mobile uh, the email client will automatically block those email, email images. So a lot of those basic hygiene things, the, uh, the software will take care of to align it to ensure that it's responsive, uh, to ensure that it looks uh, good on a desktop, it looks good on a tablet, it looks good on a mobile phone. So so that's where a tool like this comes in handy. The other thing that I want to say is a lot of people spend too much time thinking about how to design emails. I would say spend this, you know, uh, a lot more time about the content in the emails. What is that message in the email? That is, you know, far more important than the design of the email. If you were to just send, and I've you know subscribed to plenty of newsletters, and there's some great ones that don't use a single visual in their email, but it's still a very engaging to to read. So you don't have to necessarily use uh, images, right? Focus on the content, and then look at images to sub support that content. So <clears throat> the free version of Mailchimp I think limits the templates because I have a paid version. There's a lot more options here. Uh, you can also look at uh, some themes. You can just pick a ready-made theme and you can, you know, uh, edit it. So let's try that. I like to keep th things uh, quite simple. So I will take this one.
Okay. So this is the preview that you see on the left. And on the right is, uh, is basically the, just give me a second and move this away. Yeah, so these are the different blocks that you can use. It's, if you've used a website builder, think of this as an email builder. It essentially allows you to add blocks and create uh, different elements here. So I click this, so this is the logo. <clears throat> so I can replace this logo if I want. So there is, it has its own media library. Uh, so I can just search the logo, right? And and it's the, these tools have gotten so advanced that you know it has a whole sort of image editor built in that lets you scale, you know, resize, change the ratio, a whole bunch of things. You can add text, and you know, it's almost like an image editing tool here. That's, that's fairly advanced. So you can do that, select and then say insert. And then my logo has been added. I can write alt text. So all, what is this alt text? Alt text is if the email lands in your customer's inbox and those uh, either because of the corporate rules or the inbox rules, which ha it is blocking images uh, by default. And if the image doesn't load, you can sh share text. So say pixelmatic. So if there's no uh, image loading, it'll simply display a text that says pixelmatic. So I can see update, right? And then there's a heading. <clears throat> so I can, if I click on this section, it shows up here. I can change the font styles. I can make it smaller, italic, you know, you do all of that uh, here. There is also, then there is the body. So you can add different blocks. Now let's go here, right? And say, you can add merge tags. So let's say first name. So now what this does is when this email goes out to the 300 people in my, this particular email list, if I have collected their email IDs with their names, this will automatically be substituted with the names. So it will say, dear Sandeep, dear Anu, you know, the names will follow. Uh, there, it'll be substituted there, and then you have the content here, right? And all the, the rules about writing for a good blog would apply here. Uh, if you missed our previous session uh, where, you know, Anup spoke about uh, uh, blogging, some of the rules about, you know, writing short sentences, uh, short paragraphs, all of those things apply here. Think of, you know, you reading an email, would you write, like to read a really long email or would you like to read something that's crisp and to the point? So, you know, write accordingly and, you know, put the email there and then you have, uh, you know, you can put links and I would say every link should have one single clear call to action. That's it. Not more than that. Right. And don't put emails without a call to action. You must always ask the user or the customer or the audience to do something whether that's to check out a blog post that you've written, follow you on Twitter, like this person is saying, and make it easy for them to do it. Don't make them copy it and paste it into the browser. Just link it. They click on it and it automatically loads somewhere, right? So you even have a button. So you can simply click, drag it, add it here. I can change this by now to say... more <clears throat> I can put a URL here and that's it right and it's ready so this email is ready I can insert images to uh, whatever you know if I want I can add social follow you, you know there are a lot of options here that you can do you can even embed uh, YouTube videos so let's say you've done all of that and before I forget so this bottom thing that you're seeing is the email footer uh, if you configure your email account which is in the settings then all of this is automatically populated. So this is just a disclaimer saying, uh, or putting your copyright information. And also most importantly, this has to be there in every email that you send out. Please do not send out emails if you do not have a link for unsubscribing, right? If, you, if somebody wants to unsubscribe, make it easy to do it in one click, right? Otherwise they will report your e email as spam. And then, you know, there are uh, far more uh, complications 
uh, that you'll end up uh, facing. So always provide this unsubscribe link. And MailChimp does that automatically, so don't uh, remove it. Okay, so once you've put all of this together, before you send it out, <clears throat> MailChimp allows you to do a preview. So you can enter a preview mode and you can see how it might look in a desktop and how it might look on a mobile phone. Right? And yeah, so I have, so if there are email IDs with names, it say it'll automatically substitute it and it'll say dear Abhinav. That's the name of this email ID here. Okay. So there is also a inbox preview. It will try and preview uh, your emails in different inboxes, your Apple Mail, Outlook, uh, all the Gmail. So you can you can do that too. Uh, this is a paid uh, option. And uh, you can also sort of simulate how your email might render in different uh, inboxes. Okay, so that's a click, quick preview. You can also send a test email, right? So you can do <clears throat> a test email. So let's say I send a test email to myself and I quickly go and I check. It should have shown up. Yeah, there you go. Okay, so this is the email that was just sent out, right? So you send it to yourself as a test and the subject line is showing up. It always adds this little test uh, only in the, in, in the test mode. When you actually send it out, this is automatically removed. And you'll see all the different elements that are there. Okay, and, and if everything looks good, then you can go and you can also send it to your mobile. So you have a app installed, um, the MailChimp app, it can quickly send you an uh, email to your phone as well. So you can test that, right? And then continue. Okay, so you have created, you selected the audience, you added whom the email is going out from, you added a, a subject, you designed the email, and then now is the question of either sending it or you can even schedule the email. What MailChimp also allows you to do is if you connect your social media accounts and select them, you can automatically paste your email onto these different platforms. So Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. So you can automatically share a link to this email on the social media platforms. So let's say everything is good. You can either save it as a draft and finish later. You can also hit schedule and select a specific time and date and say, okay, I want to send, I want to send this out on Monday at 8.30 a.m. And then you hit schedule campaign and then done, right? <clears throat> Once the campaign is created, you will see this in the list of campaigns here. So it's right now showing up as a draft previous campaigns, you can see uh, the data. You can also go to the reports to look at the uh, you know, data in, in much sort of uh, more detail. And uh, you know, this is briefly what uh, an email marketing tool allows you to do. So coming back to the presentation. So all these different tools allow you to essentially do the same thing in you know, slight different interfaces uh, at different price points, uh, but a lot of them have free options. So I do explore uh, the free option first because it you know allows you to get started and do quite a bit, and then you can you know, move on to a paid plan when you uh, you need one. Okay, so next question is audience segmentation. How do you personalize your emails? And you do that by segmenting your audience. The 
two field that that I showed you, you know, you can add substitute email uh, the names. That's just one way to personalize. In fact, if you uh, overdo that, you know, you might actually come across as being creepy, right? And if you know people are very sensitive to their uh, data and data concerns, so you know, uh, you do not want to always uh, or overdo, uh, you know, adding their their emails, over personalizing it. But audience segmentation allows you to group people based on their preferences and interests and then send emails accordingly. So what are the different options? So lists. So list is probably the, the broadest categorization or is the, uh, the database, right? So think of this as one list as one database. And you can create one for, let's say, uh, the product that you have or a service. And there could be another newsletter specifically for company updates. Right? And so there are two different audiences completely. There's nothing in common. So you create different lists, right? So, so list is the top level uh, categorization uh, or segmentation of your audience. Then you have groups. So within a list, you can create groups. And groups in, in MailChimp at least is a front facing option. What I mean by that is it's a, it's a choice that you can offer your customer when they sign up. So your form can have name, email, and you can have check boxes or drop downs that say select your interest or your preferences. And then based on that, you put them into different groups in the same list, right? And then you have, uh, you know, let's say a, a, a group uh, where let's say you're selling uh, shoes, for example, and let's say there is one one group that's interested in sneakers. There's another group that's in, in, interested in casual uh, or formal shoes, right? So those are two different, very different interests. So now you can send out emails relevant to them because you know their interests and you've segmented that audience. So grouping people based on their interests, based on the preferences. Is, is very, very helpful. So this is a way of personalizing emails based on their interests. And you can do this through the website where you put out uh, an extra optional field that lets them select their interests and preferences. Another one is segments. This is more internal. And this is also uh, something that's automated, at least in MailChimp. You can automatically create segments based on the location of the user. So if let's say you have customers in India customers in uh, let's say Europe so you can put all the customers in Europe in one segment and the India customers in another segment and you know you might have offers that vary based on where the user is you send out emails accordingly you can also create segments on the fly based on certain user actions so user behaviors so if somebody is subscribed to a particular uh, newsletter then you create a segment automatically. If somebody's opened an email recently, you create another segment. So let's say, for example, latest uh, recent purchases. If you're on an e-commerce store, if somebody's done recent purchases in the last three months, you can create a segment on that. Right. So segments are something that you do internally, and uh, and you know, divide your audience into smaller groups, and you can send out personalized emails to them. And finally, MailChimp also gives you this option for tags. Now tags is, uh, you know, flexible. You can use this to do whatever you want. In fact, you can use tags uh, like groups or like segments. So you can use this to uh, label customer interests or locations. But if you use groups and segments already to do that, then tags can be uh, a name for a campaign. Let's say you are promoting a, uh, a product. Right? and you're running a campaign and you're collecting email IDs related to that campaign. So you can tag everybody who fills out uh, or gives you this email ID as part of that campaign and tag that campaign name in your database. So tomorrow you know that there are all these people, a subset of people in your email list came from a particular campaign. So, so you can use tags to do that. Uh, even let's say uh, if you are really advanced, you can automatically pick your campaign name from a UTM parameter, if you know what that is, and populate that into a tag 
So, so you, you are then essentially uh, grouping people based on uh, the campaigns that you're running. So let me quickly show you uh, these different segments uh, uh, or way of segmenting in MailChimp. And then maybe Anup can uh, show you what he has in mind. Okay, so going back to MailChimp. So your audience is here. This is audience is, is essentially lists. In fact, MailChimp used to call them lists, so they've changed the name to audience. So it shows you all the different audiences you have. So those are the, the lists, right, at the top level. Now within this audience, let's say, okay, so I have these subscribers. So I have created tags here. Right? There are entrepreneurs. Uh, we have a you know, list of customers, so you know whom we've worked with over the years that are very well known to us. So you know uh, we get the highest sort of uh, response rates here, and that's another thing that I you know want to mention that email marketing is also great for customer retention, right, and and upselling customers. So so these are the various tags that we have. Let me show you the groups, how you can create groups. Okay. So you have manage contacts and you have groups, segments, and you have tags. I go to groups. And so we've created, you know, there was an event that we had done. So that's that, this clients, this business contacts, and then you can create subgroups. So I have leads, I have collaborators, and because I'm active in the WordPress community, that's another one here. So I can send out emails just to the leads. I can send out emails only to collaborators. Or I can send out an email only to the WordPress community. Right? And what I want to say or send to, to, to this group might be very different from the emails that I want to send to the collaborators. Uh, and also sending campaigns separately to each of them lets you compare which ones are doing well and which ones aren't. So you can see the open rates and you can compare and contrast between the different groups. So this is a this is how you create a group, right? And like I said, groups are front facing. <clears throat> so you can uh, decide not to show them on the signup form or you can show them as checkboxes or radio buttons or drop downs. And then enter a group category and then you can put in the specific options. It's the interest name and then let's say if it's a nonprofit, then you say, are you interested in donating or are you interested in volunteering or are you interested in events? And you integrate this with your contact forms on the website and it automatically you know, collects that along with the preferences and adds it in the database. So this is groups. Also have segments. So I'm currently not using any segments, but Right. So you can use these rules uh, and say, okay, uh, any contact that was added after the last campaign was sent or before that campaign was sent. Right? That's one rule that becomes a segment. These are all the options. You can even segment people based on name, uh, websites, tags. Right? So you can, you can segment them based on you know, all these different campaign activity. So... If someone has opened in any of the last five campaigns, or last 20 campaigns, let's do a preview, <clears throat> right? So there are thousand people that match my condition. These are people who opened my recent campaigns. You can leave out people who have not opened and not send them emails anymore, right? So this is one way of segmenting it. And of course, I've showed you the tags as well. You can add tags. So these are the three ways you can segment the audience and you know, and MailChimp also lets you quickly send a campaign just for these tags. Okay. All right. So we looked at lists, we looked at groups, segments, and tags. Now, what are the different types of emails that you can send? So there are transactional emails. So if you are an online store, and, or if you've ever been a customer of an online store, you would have received these emails, right? When you purchase a product, you receive an email automatically that says, 
the order uh, was successful. Here's your receipt. When the order is shipped, you get another email. When your order is delivered, you get another email. Uh, when you sign up for accounts, you know you get an email welcoming you saying thank you for registering. So these are called transactional emails, and you generally use a uh, mailer service, which is slightly different from an email marketing platform, and uh, and those are sort of integrated with your uh, websites or your online stores to send out emails. So those are mail servers uh, that you would use generally to, to do this kind of uh, emails. Then you have informational emails. So you want to update your customer about something new that's happened, something like that's happening in your industry. There's an event coming up. Uh, there's a webinar that you're doing. Those are informational emails to send out when there is an event. Then there is educational emails. And if you're doing email marketing, this should form the bulk of your email uh, type of emails that you send out, right? Insights, tips, trends, and essentially providing your audience with valuable information and helping them make sense of all the, the uh, vast you know, variety of information and different sources that they're reading. Your email newsletter can become a source of clarity for them. So provide, you know, uh, educational emails that, that give them insights. And then promotional. I would say keep this to a minimum. Don't do this too often. Uh, if you were to do, let's say, only uh, these three, informational, educational, and promotional, a majority of it should be educational, followed by informational, and then the last would be promotional. Right? So if you have offers, if you're selling something, if there are new launches, if you want to educate somebody about that, you know, uh, do send it, but make sure that that's uh, kept to a minimum because you start sending only promotional emails, you'll see people unsubscribing uh, quite a bit, right? So these are the different uh, types of emails that, uh, that one would send. Okay, so that uh, brings me to the end. Um, We've written, uh, if you happen to use WordPress, like I mentioned brief before, uh, there are lots of tools that let you collect email IDs through uh, opt-in forms. Uh, you can then integrate those email uh, forms directly with uh, MailChimp and a whole, whole bunch of other uh, marketing platforms. We've written about that uh, in depth and it's uh, available in this uh, uh, free to download gu guide. We also have a, a email course that we send out uh, if you subscribe to this. So take a look if you happen to have your website on WordPress.